Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, how much could depend on your location. Please join in the struggle to liberate our people from the contraption. Like and share videos. Today is Saturday, the 28th of September 2024. Happy weekend. I've been going to up that. I don't know when next, if ever, it may be possible to see Mazi Namdukano again. Ejimako cries out. Oh, yes. Now, Mr. Law Ejimako, special counsel to the illegally detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Mazin Namdekanu has expressed concern over his inability to assess his client. Yes. Now, Onyendu currently heard ADSS hell. Yes. On Friday, it's my that an attempt by Onyendu's legal team to visit him was blocked by DSS operatives. This occurred just 24 hours after Justice Bintanyaku who has presided over Onyendu's trial since his extraordinary rendition from Kenya in 2021, recused herself from the case. Now, Onyendu's lead counsel, in a statement, on behalf of the legal team, stated in clear terms that DSS violated court orders and the Nigerian constitution by denying the masses to their client, Onyendu Mazanamakano. Now, the statement suggested that DSS might have cancelled future visitations as retaliation for Onyendu's legal actions that they said embarrassed Justice Nyako. Yes, they said Onyendu's action embarrassed Justice Nyako. Now, Ejimako lamented that, lamented the potential consequences stating thus, the DSS acting on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria has unlawfully isolated Kano from his lawyers, making his solitary confinement absolute. Yes. Now, Jimako added that he was uncertain when or if they will be allowed to meet Mazina Kano again. Yes, Jimako said, I don't know when next, if ever, it may be possible to see MNK again. Oh, yes, that's what's happening now. Retaliation. That's what is happening. They said Nyako was embarrassed. That Onion Dumazam can embarrass Nyako when he said he lost confidence in Nyako. Yes, handling the case. Said no confidence again. Say I cannot trust your judgment because you are biased. Yes, you have shown the, that the court, the Supreme Court have delivered judgment and said this man should be allowed. Allow him. Grant him bail. Nyako said otherwise. It was because she was acting based on the script written for him. And only Ndu scolded, scolded her Nyako. Yes, he reprimanded her saying I lost confidence in your judgment. Recuse yourself and do man. Accuse herself willingly. And that's what is happening now. The legal team said they visited the DSS hall to see Mazina Makano. Oh, yes. After that incident, the DSS denied them access. They chased them back. Go away. That is nonsensical nonsense. So you want to embarrass the legal team? Because you felt that Nyako was embarrassed. So they are retaliating now. So and from what uh, the legal team said, they said they are afraid. They are afraid. Mazan Khan is now, you know, absolutely in solitary confinement. Absolutely solitary, solitary confinement. That's what they are saying. Because nobody will be able to see him again. DSS blocks the legal team. So, what's happening? The legal team have the legal right to visit him from the court directive at least twice in a week. At least twice in a week. But they said they will not see him. They have blocked him. So, all these things, you know, retaliation, retribution, recrimination, or whatever they are doing, you see, it will not help them. It will not help them. They are digging their, the gully where they will fall. Yes. Whatever they are doing, all these things they are doing against Mazinam Kano, they are doing it against themselves. 
to their own detriment. Yes, they are shooting themselves on the leg. So it's not a question of let's punish Namdekana, let's punish the legal team, let's, no, let's punish Ndibo. The country, they are doing themselves. We have told them. They are suffering it. Instead of Nigerian masses to come out and say the truth and liberate themselves from the shackles of insecurity, from the grip of hunger, deprivation and poverty ravaging them, economic woes and malaise. The idea I'm hoping, allowing government to use this kind of thing. You see, this thing have undertone. Yes, we have said it. It has undertone. And so they are doing it, feeling that they have the right to do it because they are in power. Yes, but what they are causing for their country, apart from the undertone, you talk about the international embarrassment. The world have been seeing it and looking at them as look. This country, from the abduction in Kenya to the extraordinary rendition to the controlled incarceration against court directive and UN directive, court judgment and UN directive, the international community have been watching and seeing them as a country that have instability. They don't obey their laws. They want an investor to come and invest in a country that has no regard for their laws, for their own laws. They will not do it. In, if you, what's happening in the conception? Yes, they have been doing executive abracadabra and recklessness. They have not known to be obeying court orders. But the case of Mazen Khan is an international issue. Yes, it has the international aura. So the world they are watching. Yes, world leaders watching, observing it. So this case has exposed them to be a lawless entity. In recent time, it has exposed them to be a lawless country. So no reasonable investor will come and invest in such a place of lawlessness. Tomorrow you will turn it against him. Yes, what you said in the morning it will, will not be what you will say in the evening. Because you are a lawless country. You will say one thing today, at, in the morning, at night, you will change it to another thing. That's lawless country. You have no law, don't follow any due process or any process, whether due or not or not due, but there's no process you are following. Just abracadabra. Okay? That is it. So you are living on Inhechi Motel. Yes? No process to be followed. Just do anyhow anything you like to, to favor you. Once it will not favor you as a government, nowhere. Unless it favors you before you approve or do it. So there's no law. The government doesn't obey the law, so that's not law because the government is supposed to be number one in terms of leading by example in obeying the law. Yes, if judgment goes in against the against the government, they must obey it to show example to the citizens. Yes, so that when citizens refuse to obey the court judgment, you can now ask the appropriate authorities or quarters to take reasonable action. But in this case, the government is lawless, and you think that the international community is not aware. They have been seeing it. So the country is suffering a lot of things. Yes, they are suffering it in many ways. You have seen insecurity, unabated, even in Tinibu's region, where it's saying it comes from. Insecurity pervades and it, sub and it continues, unabated. Yes, so that is the point. You are retaliating, you are doing yourself, not Mazam Kano, not the Lego team, not Ndiwa. Not IPOB. No, no, you are doing yourself. You are you are causing more harm to your economy, to your security architecture, to your living standards, to everything that's concerning you, to entire governance. Yes. So the Nigerian masses are suffering the actions of their government. Yeah, in many ways, particularly this case of Muslim they are suffering the actions of their government. But all of them are keeping mute, keeping quiet. It's okay. So be it. Let the suffering continue. Let the